Hello, everyone. I am really excited for this episode of Plug Into Devon. We've got Galen Benyon with us. She is a candidate for the Utah House of Representatives, District 46. We're talking uh, Cottonwood Heights, Midvale, Murray, uh, Alta, Brighton. It's a big geography, very important. Uh, uh, so stick around. You don't want to miss this discussion. Uh, Galen, welcome to the show. Thank you. We're thrilled to have you. Uh, Thank you. What, what do you want to talk about today? I would like to talk about education. Um, for the past seven years, I've been a member of Women's State Legislative Council. That is a bipartisan 100-year-old group of women, and we follow bills. And so um, I don't come to this new. I come to this with seven years. Um, I think what the first thing we should probably talk about is this ongoing Utah's digital divide. There was a great article in um, the 22nd of March in the Tribune, Coronavirus Exposes Utah's Digital Divide. Um, right now, one in seven families in Utah lacks internet access. So at wow. this time, that is a huge pain for some families with the libraries closed. I talked with um, one of my friends who's a principal at a Title I school. He thinks he's getting maybe 70 to 80% of his students. And that other 20% that was already behind is now falling farther behind. That, that is scary. That, that is, is really scary. Uh, what, what do you think needs to be done to address that? OK, so here's the very sad part. <laughs> Our wonderful representative, Jennifer Daly Provost, tried to address that this last session. She had House Bill 385, and it sought to create a state office to provide strategy development, resources, and public-private digital partnerships in telehealth, digital government, and other priority areas. And that went um, to, it didn't go anywhere. So um, that is part of our problem, is that our current legislature has some wonderful, terrific members, but as a body, some really crucial things have not been addressed. So that is one of them. Yeah, uh, it's, it's frustrating. That is scary and frustrating. Um, so what would that bill have done specifically to address this uh, area of education? Well, I think it would have um, helped. Let's see what it says exactly. The bill was held in legislature to allow additional study and collaboration. So it sounds like it's going to interim, which I hope. Um, you know, we just have to find ways to get internet into these people's lives and also the skills. Because even if the kids have the internet and their parents don't know how to help them when they get stuck, yeah, that's part of the problem. Yeah, no, yeah. that's a, a great point and. Uh, yeah. It's, it's hard for parents to get excited about the internet when they hear scary things about it and they don't know how to protect their kids from it. So right. I imagine there are lots of impediments to uh, beyond just literally the uh, question of access. Boy, that's a great right. point. Um, yeah. As you've been working on uh, education the last few years, how do, you, how do you think about this in terms of uh, its impact on you personally? Um, what do you mean exactly with that question? Well, uh, why is this important to you? Uh, do you? Okay, so I have been actively involved with the immigrant, migrant, uh, refugee community. And um, uh, them coming to a physical class where they feel support, it, they tell me that's like the highlight of their week. So now we don't have that. And the English Skills Learning Center that I've been volunteering through, they are working on getting access for everybody. But again, that the older population, they're not going to have that access. The, the very poorest of them will not have that access. Yeah, that is uh, scary yeah. ramifications. Uh, well, I, I commend you for working with that community. It's such a, a, a vital part of our uh, our state, our nation, and our community, uh, but for them to be successful requires uh, for us to engage with them and support them, yes. so I commend you for doing that. Yeah. Can uh, we talk about uh, uh, two bills 
in particular? Also? Yes, please. Okay. We've got about one minute left. Oh, no. Okay. Well, we need to talk about House Bill 357. This is a public education funding stabilization bill and SJR 9. And these are to put on the on the ballot this November, you will find these, this bill, it would take away the education earmark, which is a scary thing for us because we basically don't trust our legislature to fund education because they have a billion dollars in their rainy day fund for education and they're not spending it. And that makes us want to hit our heads on the wall because they're holding it off. And um, But I have talked with people, um, I want to get this name right, the um, basically education is supporting this bill because it will give them ongoing funding. Every year they have to go to fight the legislature for the money that they need for the WGU, the, the weighted student funding. And this would give ongoing funding. So even though it's a scary thing, it's just a bill, they would prefer a constitutional amendment that would guarantee this, but it would give ongoing funding so with a scary hope, they're supporting this. But we all need to learn more about it, and we all need to support education. It is the, the basis of our democracy is informed, engaged citizens. And with all the Internet access we have to so much information and fake news, we need to critical thinking skills, and school is where we can learn that. Yeah. Well, that is really an important uh, message. Uh, Galen, I really appreciate you taking time to be with us today. Uh, and education is so incredibly important. And there's so much to be done to improve uh, funding and everything else around education, internet access being such a critical piece as well. Before you go, I wanna ask one last question. Galen, what is your superpower? Okay, I'm very excited to tell you. My superpower is connection, <laughs> okay? Just last summer, I told my sister-in-law, I'm like a spider. I make connections with people and between people. I make connections with ideas and learning, and I, make, I, I get critical energy from my connection with nature and my own physical body. And that is my superpower. Oh, that's great. What a great superpower. Yeah. Well, Gaylin, before you go, please tell people how they can learn more about your candidacy. Okay, you can go to www.gaylinbenyon.com. That is my website. And on Facebook, you can go to Elect Gaylin HD46. And um, my phone number, if you want to call me, is 385 200 Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Gaylin, we wish you every success in your crusade to improve education in Utah because heaven knows we need it. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Let's do some good. Okay. I'm Devin Thorpe. For the last eight years, I've been working full-time to eradicate extreme poverty, improve global health, and fight climate change. I've concluded the best way for me to continue my work is to run for Congress to represent the people of Utah's 3rd District. In Utah, we have common, shared values. Those things unite us. I believe passionately in our ability to come together and I believe that working together, we can solve Utah's problems. I'm Devin Thorpe. I'm a Democrat. I'm running to represent the people of Utah's third district. I'm Devin Thorpe, a candidate for Congress, and I approve this message.